Okay. As we dabble in software this summer, we often end up getting to software that we're not necessarily used to when we're trying to convert between files. And in that vein, I'm going to introduce you something something called an open source program. I think it's out of Stanford called MeshLab, which has to do with dealing with large point files from point clouds. And so you'll see there are other 3D formats out there, Collada, um, VRML, OBJ, uh, and the like. And I'm introducing to something called a PLY file here, which is out of Stanford. Once again, this is coming from the concept of how easy and quickly it's going to be before we can get all kinds of point cloud data, which many of us in civil already know about by going and freaking out at 3D scanners. Um, there's there's more. You'll see when you get into engines like um, Photosynth, they're going to be producing 3D point files for you to strip out. Things that come out of just having a couple of photographs of something where you can kind of remake the 3D image based on the trigonometry of different photos. So I'll give you MeshLab. I'll show you what it looks like. It's an easy download. Go out to Wikipedia. It's open source. I'm going to open a file which I brought in from downloaded from a site some example formats um, I've got nothing in there but but I do have it put it know where it's at it's in my computer at the very often I put up things at C temp way down things come down in a zip G zip is a program you want to get there's a lot of files that come up with the G zip is an open source zip file. I'm going to go to the bin here and I'm going to go ahead and bring up first I'll bring up the shark which I just downloaded. Shark there it is. This looks kind of cool. Lots of things you can turn on and off in terms of lighting and I'm not sure what all you got the mesh different ways to kind of look at your file just in terms of the points that's a nice one there. If you look at the pure point file there kind of neat stuff so that's uh, that file and I'll go once again I'll show you up a new file here this one is a little bit more impressive it's a blade file it is a scan of a turbine blade those of you who are dealing in renewable energy I think you've heard of turbine blades this is the original turbine I'm not sure what kind of turbine this is it could be pretty small, it could be pretty large, depending on what it's coming out of. But if you notice there, I'm kind of moving around. Once again, you can change how I look at it by clicking. And you start to see here, when I go to that, how dense the points are in this case. So I'll slow down here a little bit. So that is the kind of file that comes out. I'm scanning around when you do some sort of intensive scan you can see all the points that are there so this file here the reason why specifically I'm going to be using the software is buried pretty deep in here and it is this is the single best place I've found that kind of shows you the combination transformation matrix which includes rotation about three axes scale about three directions and translation and so let's see if we can find that here probably won't be able to do it windows filters we're looking here for it's not in tools it's going to be buried someplace down here filters cleaning and repairing that's not what we want. Refreshing and reconstructing. Nope. All kinds of incredible tools here. Quality measurements, normals, curvature, the apply, the transformation here. And I'll finish up just this in a quick five minutes just to show you. This is a basic transformation matrix. Those of you that are dealing in SketchUp, in AutoCAD 3D, Civil 3D, and Civil coordinate systems you've been dealing with transfer matrices now it's time to kind of look how straightforward the mathematics is and so I'll just show you very quickly I'll do a quick translation of 10 in the X 
20 in the Y and 30 in the Z and I hit apply here you notice how the transformation matrix changes I'm gonna now rotate it 45 degrees about the x-axis I'm gonna apply that you notice how it changes some numbers there I'm gonna rotate it maybe 60 degrees about the y-axis see how it changes the matrix again and then I'm gonna change it some more 50 degrees about the z-axis and you have your rotation matrix all that happens I could go ahead and change the scale 4 in the X hit apply here scale to unit box hit apply here and you notice that scale how it's changing the matrix and what it appears to be doing is each time it's actually just doing one so you have to multiply one matrix by the other alright so I am gonna hit apply on that I don't know what it's gonna do to my file but mostly what we're doing with this here is we're just showing you that this interface here buried in mesh lab as well as just learning to deal with point files importing exporting and the like um, is a useful thing and I'll then finally show you the export here I'll go back file I'm gonna reopen this file the blade it's loading all that file we're gonna export it to a DXF file DX file F DXF files have and continue to be one of the preferred AutoCAD format so I'm gonna do a file save as have all kinds of choices here one of them I'm gonna just show you DXF I'm surprised that this still works but I'm gonna go ahead and stick it there blade.dxf I'm gonna hit OK it should be a pretty large massive file it may take down the machine I'm going to then do a DXF in into AutoCAD DXF has been always was one of these kind of preferred file format systems it's not very efficient but if you see it here it's writing out a lot of information this file could be in the mega 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 this file just so you know when it came in the PLY format was 82 meg 82 megabytes that's why things come zipped up so I'm not sure here in the end whether this was that smart a thing to go ahead and go ahead and save it out as a DXF file now the shark file did work quite well and you'll see the DXF then is a pretty good method for transferring files from one place to the other. We'll give this a couple more minutes. It looks like it did it. So I'm going to close out Mesh Lab now, go into AutoCAD here and do a DXF in to show you how that four file looks. Hopefully we'll be able to find it. Go to model here. Once again, you must realize that the world of staying in one software ended ages ago and so though we have AutoCAD as our one of our programs we're going to realize that you're going to be dealing with any great number of things understanding the coordinate systems and layers and management thereof is an important thing in any program will get you a long way um, it'll get you into Photoshop it will get you into SketchUp it will get you into AutoCAD it will get you any number of places and so we'll try it now DXF in is the general command we'll go ahead you notice that blank that that file was 373 meg so it was about four times five times larger as an AutoCAD file than it was as a um, a PLY file apply file I hit open here trying to do the DXF in we'll see what happens very 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 large file not very efficient we may run out of time we may run out of computing power but it says it's not responding we'll give it a little bit of time here again that file is extremely large and so then you start to see how in effect with this large a file size how you have to go to a different file format so PLY OBJ point files will be coming at you um, I can tell you that the place the time the phone calls I made after first seeing a 3d scanner and just completely freaking out so this AutoCAD this DXF is not responding so we're gonna end our 10 minutes here with a whole bunch of nothing but then realize that we are we have introduced you to mesh lab mesh lab it's an open source program for dealing with point files Thanks for listening.